This is the electric vehicle charging station from Victron Energy. It can deliver up to 22 kilowatts of AC in three phase or 7.3 kilowatts in single phase. In this technical video, we'll explain how to install and set up the station, as well as run through all of the menus. When buying an electric vehicle, as standard, they come with a single phase power adapter to connect to a domestic electricity outlet. With a power rating of up to 3 kilowatts, it provides around 8 kilometers of range for every 30 minutes of charge. This new charger from Victron Energy increases the vehicle charging power if the vehicle is capable, so you can do more driving in less time. Not only does this electric vehicle charging station fully integrate with a Victron Energy GX device and VRM, if you have solar it can be set up so that once your house batteries are full, excess power from the sun can directly charge your vehicle. The tough plastic enclosure is designed to withstand harsh weather and can be mounted inside or outside. It incorporates a 11cm LCD touchscreen so you can monitor and control the charger. Within a configurable light ring there is a Type 2 electric vehicle charging plug. This is the standard European charging cable connector type and is fully compatible with both single and three phase electricity supplies. On the base of the station there is a nylon cable gland for the incoming power cable of up to 19mm in diameter. There are some venting holes as well as a hole for draining any water from inside the connector. To access the connections inside the charging station, you need to remove the black backing plate by removing the eight stainless steel screws. Inside the unit there is a control board and screen, the three phase relay that turns the power on and off, as well as the electric vehicle socket and connections for the incoming supply. We recommend a 40 amp RCD protected supply is brought to an external location by a qualified electrician. Using the backing plate, mark the wall where it should be mounted and drill four holes with wall plugs ready for installation. If your main supply cable is coming from inside a building, measure a suitable location and drill through the wall for the cable. Label each individual cable and pass it through the wall, through the nylon gland and grommet and into the charging station. Terminate the cable ends with ferrules and connect to the relevant points. If this is a single phase install, simply use Live 1 neutral and earth connections. Inside the unit is a sticker containing the model, serial number and password. Note down or take a photo of the password on the internal label, ready for later. Tighten the nylon gland around the cable and mount the back panel onto the charging station and then mount the station on the wall. Turn on the power at the RCD. We will now go through the initial setup. When the device is first turned on, the screen will display an IP address and the unit will broadcast its own Wi-Fi hotspot. To connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot, scan the QR code on the internal label or on the screen that is only shown in the initial setup. This will include the username and password and automate the connection. Once connected, in a browser, type in the default IP address as indicated. The username is admin and the password is the one from the label inside the station from earlier. Click login. There are two types of Wi-Fi modes. Access point is where the unit creates its own Wi-Fi access point. This is either for setting up the unit or if you don't have a separate Wi-Fi network including a GX device. Station is where you connect the device to a Wi-Fi network that includes other Victron devices like a GX device and VRM. If using the basic access point, click Next. 
If you select the Wi-Fi mode station, you will need to scan for and configure an external Wi-Fi setup. Click the scan button to search for other Wi-Fi networks. Tick the network you wish to connect to and click apply. In the password box, enter the external Wi-Fi password and click next. In stage two of the setup, you will be asked to change the password using at least eight characters with lower, upper and special characters. Confirm the password and click next. In stage three, you will need to set the maximum charging current. Your electrician will inform you of this. Click the save button. It will connect the EV charging station to the external Wi-Fi network and after a short delay, log you into the main setup page. Click the settings tab at the top of the screen. Five sub tabs will appear. The Wi-Fi tab, this has all the current settings already completed. The general tab, here you can select where you have positioned the EV charging station within your system. If, for example, you have the charging station on the output of an inverter as one of the mains AC out sources, select Inverter AC Out. If your system is completely off-grid, you would select this option. If you are connected to the grid and position the charging station on the grid AC input before the inverter, you'll select the Inverter AC In option. You can change the maximum charging current. If you are off-grid and have no grid connection, you can set the minimum system state of charge percentage so the vehicle leaves you some power to use in the property. You can enter the cost of your kilowatt of energy. Although this is indicated in euros, it will calculate other currencies the same. The ability to change the currency icon will come in a later software release. You can use the EV charging station as a standalone item, but the functionality will of course be limited. If it's part of a larger Victron Energy system, you can set the Modebus TCP client. The IP address should be that of the GX device. On the GX device itself, Modebus TCP needs to be enabled to allow communication. You can set how bright the LCD should be, choose your time zone and you can change the device name which will be shown within the GX device and on VRM if used. The light ring tab. On the front of the station around the vehicle socket is a ring of lights. These can be customised to display a variety of different modes, how long that mode is displayed, the brightness of the lights and their colour. The coloured ring is to indicate at a glance what your electric vehicle charging station is doing. You can show a certain light colour and pattern when there is a low state of charge or when the vehicle is charged for example. If you make any changes, click the save button at the bottom of the screen. The access tab. You can change the username and password used in the initial setup. The backup tab. Here you can export or input saved settings as well as reset the charging station back to factory defaults. At the top of the screen there is a Wi-Fi strength indicator between the charging station and your main Wi-Fi if the station mode is enabled. On the main screen there is a charging mode switch. Manual enables you to turn the vehicle charging on and off manually using the start stop button. You can change the amount of current the station provides using the slider. When in automatic, the system will determine all the settings for you. Just like a GX device, the screen shows how current is flowing and in this example there are two solar sources, one from a PV inverter and one from a PV charger. A multi plus two, the battery state as well as if the grid is connected and all their wattage loads. If a GX device is included in the system, such as a Serbo GX or a Color Control GX, and is on the same network as the EV charging station, there are a variety of settings that can be changed directly from the GX device related to either manual or automatic mode.
You can see the electric vehicle charging station on the main dashboard of VRM as well as its summary and the power in more advanced graphs. So now that the charging station is set up, how will it work within a larger Victron Energy system? The two mode settings are key to making the best use of the charging station. This can be changed on the charger screen in the web interface on a GX device or remotely via VRM. By manually determining how much power goes into a vehicle charge, you can make allowances for other loads in a property. The options are endless, but the manual mode gives you full flexibility. A typical Victron system will, once the house batteries are full and there is excess solar, feed that excess solar back to the grid, or if not connected to the grid, reduce the solar to current usage or just disable the solar. When an EV charging station is installed and in automatic mode, that excess solar will instead be used to charge the vehicle. We hope you found this setup instruction video useful. As always, more details including photos can be found on the product page on the Victron Energy website.